What we're going to do in this video today is give you a full tour of this boat, the Sea Wind 1160. This is the deluxe version. A few little differences between the deluxe and the light version. And then we're also, because we've been living on this boat for a few days, we obviously have been studying it for years now, really talking about and deciding the options and everything that we're going to have on our boat. We're going to let you know some of the things on this boat that we really like, some of the things that maybe we don't like so much or that we won't have on our boat. Just give you a little bit of a nuanced perspective about this boat uh, from our point of view. We hope you enjoyed coming with us on a road trip across the country, but it's time for us to get back on the water. Over the next few weeks, we're going to bring you with us as we sail, explore, and enjoy getting back to boat life in the San Juan Islands. These videos are made possible by San Juan Sailing, our amazing patrons, and you. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the fun. The inside space and the outside space it's now one. All right, guys, let's give you a boat tour here. Let's start with the outside. So we're on a Sea Wind 1160 catamaran. It's 38 feet long and about 22 feet wide. Right now we're in the cockpit. So dual helms here, one on each side, both connected. But right through that hatch there, you could disconnect them in case one rudder failed. You have uh, independent steering if you wanted. This boat has diesel engines, 3YM30s, so they're 29 horsepower each, Yanmars. Um, and this boat's set up with Ray Marine electronics, so we got some wind instruments and the chart platter right here. Whether you have this door open or not, you can take uh, this hatch off. You can completely remove it. And now you have access to your chart platter, which just pivots around and it's it makes it much easier to see through here especially if you're wearing sunglasses but it is not impossible to do with it there either all right so in this helm area obviously we have a nice comfortable seat with the back here we can put this this way and sit this way if we like um and this whole thing opens up and there's storage underneath short power cord in there right now so if you get the outboard version of this boat this is where the outboards would be. They'd come up through there and you'd have access through them right through there. Besides that, we have an electric winch on this boat and then a regular manual winch here. Cubbies here to organize all your lines. All the lines are led aft into the cockpit in this boat, so some on this side, some on that side and this nice uh, line organizer here that holds all the, the loose lines. This boat has an anchor chain counter is that what you call it? Let's you know how many feet of anchor uh, chain you have out. Um, obviously the engine controls, a little compass there, chart plotter. The shore power plug is right here, just below the helm. And this is just a vent that vents out the area behind here. So this is something that we just bought, brought because we're so used to using Navionics on our iPad. We like to have it at least as a backup. We have just a little suction cup mount right here and then our iPad clamps right right there. Same thing on this side except no chart plotter and you only have one uh, one little Raymarine display that you can probably that you can choose to display like your apparent wind speed, your true wind speed, angles, all that stuff um, and a compass as well over on this side. This hatch also opens the same way that that hatch does. Oh we also have some speakers obviously and then a manual bilge pump, emergency bilge pump on either side. God forbid you need to use that. Sorry, Jets, I scared you. And then look back here. This is one of my favorite parts of the boat. Besides the trifold door, just the whole layout back here. So we have two bench seats and it's on either side of this awesome grill that we've been using. Just a nice comfortable lounge area. Right behind me here is the dinghy davit. Where dinghy just gets raised and then you can tie it off on either side just to secure it even more. And those lines are led right here through some cleats there and right above the dinghy 
davits are a couple solar panels just on a stainless steel structure. This boat also has a bunch of like uh, Isen glass enclosure so we can roll this down here on either side. But you, you can also get more Isen glass enclosure that goes all the way over here. So you can have this, you can have this whole thing completely closed off. And I think, I don't know if he has it for this boat as well, but we just saw another boat, a 1260 that also has eyes and glass all across the back. So like here in the Pacific Northwest, if it gets cold and rainy, you could potentially have this whole entire cockpit closed off and just more dry living area. So besides just the eyes and glass being protected from the rain and cold, um, it, this whole thing is a hard bimini, so you have a ton of sun protection if you are, say, in the Caribbean. Plenty of shade under here, but if you're at the helm and you need to peek up at the sails, you have plenty of room to be able to peek up at the sails or peek up over the cabin top at the front of the boat if you need to, but for the most part, you can just see right through the entire boat. Because you have a 360 view, there's so much visibility through, through the entire boat. So like I said before, all the lines are led aft. We got our winches, two on either side. Uh, that big winch I don't believe is electric. This is the only electric winch on the boat, but super useful in raising the mainsail. It's a two to one, so there's a lot of line to pull in and just pushing the button, just so easy. And then all the clutches for all the lines are right here as well, so easy reach from the helm. Pretty nice wide um, sugar scoops for a 38 foot boat. And then also have a little ladder that you can pull down to make it easy to get in and out of the water there. Looks like a pretty nice area to fillet some fish if you ask me. So this is our traveler control right here. Our main sheet control is right there. Um, but this is a cool traveler system. It's completely out of the way up on the target there. So two clutches. If we want to pull the traveler to port, we can just grab it on the winch and if we need to and use the winch, crank it over to port, making sure that the other um, starboard line is free to run free. Pull the traveler to port or vice versa. We want to pull the traveler over to starboard. Obviously there's no load on the sail right now so I can do it by hand. But I can completely pull it over to starboard there. More solar on top of the hard bimini here. I don't know how much solar is total on this, but probably what, six or 800 watts. As we move forward, you see all the lines through the deck organizer running aft into the cockpit. Um, so this boat is equipped with uh, like a 95% um, self-tacking jib, but you can also get the option to have like a Genoa. For this boat, it also has a screecher. So it's just uh, the screecher sheet cars and track. And then right here, we can step up onto the step and get up right onto the hard bimini. Be able to access anything up on the main cell here or the solar panels. And they have a jack line right here. Be able to unzip the whole sail bag. Like I said, two to one halyard on the main cell. Some nice hand holds around the whole boat. Got some hand holds here. here. It's like I said, it's a self tacking jib, so it's probably 95% or so. And it's on this track. So all you need to do it to control the shape of the jib is just one jib sheet. And when you tack across, you don't have to do anything. It just slides along the track and tacks across with the wind. So we have these stops where you can stop how far the jib car goes across. But this boat also has a control line here. So you can also like kind of fine tune from the cockpit where exactly you want that, that jib sheet car. The hatch is down into each cabin there, there, and there, above, above the bed. bed. These hatches are directly above the bunks on either side. I have the hose out now, the salt water wash down hose because we're about to pull up the anchor. It's kind of full right now because they have some uh, mops and deck brushes and chairs. Um, this is where the propane locker is in its own sealed vented locker. And then we filled it up with some wing foiling gear and stuff like that. Um, right behind that, this is where the anchor windlass is. Anchor windlass, they have a ton of chain on the boat so you can control it from the cockpit or from the foot pedals here, which has been really nice. In front of that. Um, just some more storage. Here's a spare anchor, big spare anchor. But we threw a fender in there just to store it. Just some more storage in each of these. We just got some fenders, some spare lines, some dock lines. Slightly uh, shallower storage compartments. Some more storage up there. We got a crab trap and another hose. 
the best spot on the boat, obviously, the trampolines. Although, I think the cockpit gives it a run for its money with the trifold door system. This boat has a screecher option and obviously the bow sprit to be able to fly the screecher off of. The screecher is on a continuous furler and then just the stays on the end of the bow sprit to hold it down. The jib is a furling jib, obviously. This crossbeam is a composite crossbeam built into the boat rather than an aluminum crossbeam like on a lot of catamarans. Like I said, it has a saltwater wash down, so there's an outlet right here. There's also an outlet in the cockpit, um, which is really nice. The uh, charter San Juan sailing lets bars on paddleboards, so we just put them on a couple fenders and lashed them down over there on the side of the deck. Oh, this is something you'll see on a lot of catamarans: is having these um, lifelines forward here. I mean, obviously, all boat, most boats have lifelines. These guys have got lifelines forward and some stanchions forward as well. Especially in the cockpit area, it feels really secure. It feels like you're never at risk of like falling overboard. There's always like something to grab or a lifeline there. Like especially when you're in the cockpit over here, you just feel like you're really locked in. Even if you're standing up here, like you have good view, good control at the helm, and you just feel feel secure here. I showed you guys the clutches on that, so I'm not gonna go through every single clutch, but um, just more clutches for all the lines led aft on this side. And then over on this side, we have the jib furling line here, and then the jib sheet right there. And they both can be led back to a winch if you need it. Something cool on this boat as well is, on top of all the electronics that it has, it also has a camera up there, which I, I asked the owner, like, I was like, what do you use it most for? And he said, picking up moorings and docking, and he said it's awesome for that. So we've actually used it a couple times. It really is it gives you a really cool view from it's not all the way at the top of that mass it's just at the spreaders but it's still it's a great perspective as you approach a mooring we haven't approached a dock with it yet but that's something that i never really consider to be super valuable but i can see how how easy it makes life especially when you have like cruising couple and one person's trying to pick up the mooring the other one's trying to position the boat you can see it right on the chart plot or right from the helm you can just you have that view of the front of the boat just exactly where the mooring is, so that's pretty cool. Okay, now we're gonna bring you inside. <laughs> Notice that the door is not, not on, but we do have a door. Welcome to the saloon. This is just an awesome space. The settee, the couch, whatever you wanna call it, is huge and super comfy. This whole table goes down and makes another big bed. And then there's another cushion that goes on top of it and a super comfy area there, galley. Welcome to my galley. So, here we have three burner stove, oven, all run by propane. We got some nice cabinets here. Lots and lots of storage. Come on over to my nice big double sink. Right now we have a dish drying rack in here, but two sinks, super nice. Again, more storage pretty much everywhere you look. We have a double bench freezer in here. Lots more storage. This is where we have snacks, salt, pepper, all that good stuff. Coffee soups. Up here, if you choose, you can have a microwave. More storage. Then we have places to keep your coffee goods and your plates and bowls. So there's lots of things on this boat that we're like really liking and taking notes on for hours, but this is definitely one of them. And it holds the fridge. So when you're like doing a huge grocery shop and you're like putting one thing in and then opening and closing and opening and closing, it just, and you get hit in the head a bajillion times like we've done on our old fridge, this just keeps it up there for you. And when you want to let it down, you just push it up and there you go. We then have a front opening fridge. Lots of room, more room than the fridge in our camper, that's for sure. And once again, storage everywhere you look. Storage over here, storage over here. My favorite part. You see the seal? 
like Billy just showed you, a couple of my favorite parts of this whole galley area is the view and all of these glorious windows, but also in the Caribbean, it gets hot, especially when you're cooking and you just have this beautiful opening hatch to get a nice breeze. Right above this stove as well. And, and we go to the guest quarters and here we have a nice queen, I believe, size bed. Super comfy. Hatch right above your bed. Again, nice breeze, keeps you cool. Storage everywhere you look. <laughs> and here is the second head and you have a sink that also doubles as a shower. As well, of course, as the actual head, the toilet. Nice big old medicine cabinet with lots of space. Storage down here. And in here you will find all of your water pumps in the holding tank. And a hatch right above you. So in here we have a full size bed. And in here we have the front section is storage and then behind there is one of the engines. Right now we are literally just using the space as storage for a surfboard and some paddles. And then we also turned it into Jetty's little den. So her food is down here, her water and food bowls. And then this is just our box to help us bring all of our food back when we get off the boat. Again, look at all of the windows and the hatches. And for us, like, we know we're going to be spending the majority of our time in the tropics where it's hot and humid and having a breeze is like, Having the ability to get that breeze in the boat is the best. Uh, and there is even more storage way back here. Billy thinks he's going to turn this area into his man cave. I don't know about that. It is the perfect area to have like an extra set of guests. Like we have two up there, two back here, two on there. We can have tons of people. And now let's go over to our side. The storage doesn't end, people. This whole thing, this is where they're storing tools, but it moves, it's really deep. So here we have our VHF, our stereo system, heater, fire detection system, and then we got all the light controls right here. Now this is one of my favorite parts, our head. And look at how big and how glorious our shower is. Shut the door. <laughs> If you guys have been watching us for a while, you know Tula didn't have a shower. Neverland, we used our sink faucet thing and stuck it out the window and showered outside. Adrenaline had the little um, sink ones where you like raise above our head. This is the first time we'll ever have an actual shower head. And I am liking it. <laughs> Besides that, we have sink, storage, more storage behind the door. Did you know? Come on in. We never really shut this door, so you might not know where it is. A nice big old mirror. <laughs> and this has been a discussion for Billy and I lately is all of our options, obviously. And one that we have also never had is an electric flush toilet. And it is really nice. And I don't know if I could ever go back once using this. So we might have to get that. Somehow, we're gonna have to make some money. <laughs> okay, let's turn around. And in here, you have your port side diesel engine. So there's a light right there. Um, like I said, three YM30s, Yanmars, waste holding tank, hot water tank, autopilot, steering quadrant, Raycor fuel filter. You can get all the way back here, but pretty good access to that diesel there. I like that light. That really lights up the whole thing. And check this thing out too. If you ever, God forbid, have a fire in there, you just stick the hose right through there. You don't have to open the whole, whole door. Or yeah, a fire single for sure. You just stick it right through here. And that way you're kind of keeping yourself separated from the fire while you try to put it out with the fire extinguisher. And now we will bring you to the nav station. So ours is gonna look a little different. I know you all are dying to know what boat we're getting and all that good stuff, but it's gonna be a little different than this. But anyways, super nice nav station. Under here is a bunch more storage. All of our computers here, so I don't really wanna lift it up too high. 
And then this is definitely an extra option, but more storage up here, which is where they have their air horns, binoculars, some more first aid stuff, all of the controls, all of these different display control systems. Battery switches, build switches. And then on this side, we are kind of just using it for all of our camera <laughs> camera gear right now, but they also have a nice little bookshelf. And once again, we are lined with storage. Jetty doesn't want to show you that side, but it's good, it's good, Jay. We're gonna go with this one next, please. <laughs> This is where they have all of their extra charts and cruising guides and all that good stuff, but you get the point. There is so much storage. And Billy and I, when we first went on these boats, we looked at it and we were like, how are we ever going to fill up that space? And then we told ourselves, if we ever filled up that space, we have too much stuff. This is just storage right now. They have the cushion for that settee. Here we have the inverter and charger and then the shore power transformer thing. AC distribution box, and then just some storage back here. Let's go on into our one. We've never had a bed before where you can get on from both sides. It always includes one of us climbing over the other one and probably waking somebody up in the process. But here, we can get up from both sides. And it's nice and big and cozy. There's a hatch right above our bed. We're gonna have fans on both sides because again, we're gonna be in hot places. A little bit lower headroom, but way more than we had in Adrenaline, and we're used to it, especially the camper and all the boats we've had. Um, and that's one thing that a lot of people say, like, oh, they have low headroom, but we're used to it. And look, even over there, like, you could sit fully upright, like even I could, I think. Uh, I can. Yeah, I think I could, too, in the corner. Wait, why is that side your side? I don't know. That's just the side I claimed. And then, down here. Voila! More places to put all your clothes. Right now we just have a duffel bag. Lots of clothes space down there. As well as over here. This is where we currently have all the things we brought, just our clothes. And in here we have some hanging space, which is always nice to hang like our foul weather gear. Here we have a couple of PFDs. We just have our backpacks and some of our big jackets. Another hatch right above my head. Storage down there? Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked. <laughs> Voila, more, more storage. storage. That could be for like shoes. Wow, extension cords. There's just places everywhere you look. And this is your warning. We cannot have enough stuff to spill up. I agree. I am with you there. And there's a couple things in the main saloon that I didn't show you that we got to go back. Besides the glorious view, 360 view, which is awesome in every way, shape, and form, look at how giant these hatches are. Like, what? Like, can you imagine this being in the middle of the Bahamas where it's like usually super hot out and we're just like chilling? No issues. Full on, like just full breeze coming through the boat. No wind scoops necessary. Our hatch is pretty much its own wind scoop. Like, definitely one of our favorite parts about the boat. And then, do you want to show them this part? So that's where the battery compartment is. It's some more room behind here. It doesn't seem like they use a lot of this for storage. It's just like system stuff like batteries and wiring back there. I don't know what's directly under there. Yeah, so 12 volt panel, breaker panel, starting battery. On this side, what do you know, more storage. And I think that's pretty much it for the tour. One thing we did want to walk you guys kind of through is all the things that are on this boat that we absolutely love, like little additions that they did. But also things we've learned that we want to change a little bit. Let me talk about one thing. See, I already showed you where the heater was. It's a little Webasto diesel heater. And it's just click of a button, bam. The heater goes on, goes on for an hour, uses diesel fuel, like just sips diesel fuel. And it's a nice, dry, warm heat through the boat. There's three vents in this boat, three fans. And you can turn the fans on and off, low, off, or high. Um, and you can kind of control the temperature and where it is throughout the boat with those fans. So especially in the Pacific Northwest here, it's really nice to, or it's been really nice for us at least, to have that heater, like throw it on in the evening when it gets cool. And in the morning when you first wake up and it's pretty chilly, nice, dry, warm heat. But 
We are not going to get one of those. That's yeah. <laughs> um, although, if if we had if we plan to be in New England or here in the Pacific Northwest for any time of any extended period of time, um, I think we would uh, get that. Um, but we're not. We're simply we're not like we're gonna be in the tropics. Yeah, that will probably be an AC instead of a heater. Hopefully, maybe. Some little stuff that is just so simple, but it's like, so like, wow, like why haven't we put things like that in places before? These little hooks when the door is down is the perfect, they're just suction cups, but they're the perfect places to hang your foul weather gear. Yeah, so the door is right here and you just hang your jackets right behind that door on those hooks. And then we showed you the little lift thing for the freezer. Like this is ingenious, so we're definitely going to do something like that. That's and that seems like it's definitely like aftermarket type thing. And like, I think most of the things I'm pointing out are aftermarket. Like just the, the more suction cups, like yeah, suction cups everywhere. Like I usually don't really like suction cups because I always fall and it's pain. But none of these have fallen at all, and it's really nice. Some things that are not on this boat that I think we are definitely going to have are number one, privacy screen. So in the head and like. The bedroom area if you're at the dock and the lights are on people can see you you are on a show <laughs> you are given a show so we are definitely going to have privacy screens even though we're not at docks all that often sometimes we're in close anchorages and no offense but i don't want someone to see me in the shower so that's one and then um they have a lot of cigarette lighters everywhere which is awesome um this boat i think is 2015 so those were probably perfect but we are going to have usb and USB C ports literally everywhere you can turn because we have the GoPros and the cameras and the computers and everything. That Almost nothing uses cigarette lighters yeah, anymore. But that's just when the boat was made. That's yeah, yeah. Was. But that's just yeah, definitely an improvement. But the place yeah. that they have the places that they have them are good ideas on where we can put ours. Like there's one up there, there's one down here, there's one under each bed. Oh, and then one thing that's on here that I really, really, really do want and has solidified that just like the 1260 is the electric flush toilets. If only we could afford them. <laughs> um, what about you? Did you? Is there anything that you really like around here? Yeah, a lot of what I've seen is a lot of the little stuff, like the privacy screens, the suction cup stuff, where fans should go, stuff like that, where, where more lights could go. And then, like, the bigger stuff is just, like, your normal options. Like, obviously, a sail plan. Like, we're definitely getting bowsprit. We're definitely going to get a screecher and asymmetric spinnaker. What about so, stuff like this? Like, this is all extra. Like, this... Like these cabinets don't come standard or these doors really like there's storage up here, but they're not covered the way these are. Right. So these do you really like this. I do really like it. Like if money wasn't an option, would we get it? We definitely won't be getting a microwave. We are not microwave people. Yeah, we just don't. We never have. We I haven't use used a microwave in 20 years. Like you said, this is all still storage down here, but it's just not fully enclosed. Right. It's just a little shelf or lip or something. And then up here. Same thing. Yeah. And then uh, on the nav station over there, like I said, ours is going to be a little different, but it is an option to have it lift up and have storage under there. That doesn't come standard. So I know it is really nice, but it is. Yeah. But again, like one of our biggest limiting things is budget. Yeah, so, so we are already extending ourselves with the options that we want. So to extend ourselves further with like options that aren't completely necessary. Like if it was between this and an electric flush toilet, I'd definitely take the electric flush toilet. Right. Um, other things that I don't know if it's the owner or the charter company, but things I really like are literally the labels everywhere. I don't yeah. know if that's like super lame and new. I mean, I'm sure they do it for the, because this boat's in charter, but it is extremely helpful. But and like, even like the lights, like, okay, I don't have to think about which switch this is. Like that goes there, that goes there. And it'll, those will be helpful just to have guests on board, just to have our friends and family on board. Like I remember when Billy Sad came to visit us on Adrenaline in the Bahamas and he could not figure out, shout out to you, Mr. Squeezy, our head. <laughs> it was manual pump head. I tried to explain it as best I could, but he was having a little difficulty. But here, like... When we were on the 1260, I was brand new to this and I had no idea what these buttons meant. But look flush for three seconds three to five seconds that's when you go number one number two that's what you do like the instructions are right there <laughs> i like it it spells it all out for you and it's easy and especially yeah for guests so we'll definitely have to get some sort of label maker all right you guys so i hope you guys like that tour let us know in the comments if you have any questions or you think we missed anything um let us know if you like the boat yeah let us know how you like the boat and could you live on it? Could this be your boat? Is this boat too small for you?
Is it too big for you? Enough storage? Not enough storage? How would you option it out if it was your boat? <laughs>